I, my life is filled with inflection points. I think most people tend to go on a trajectory and uh, I, my life has been more episodic. I set out to be, um, to go to school to be an architect. And I had this crazy idea of paying my way through architecture school by programming computers. And, uh, and as soon as I got my hands on a real computer, a real digital computer, all of a sudden I, I fell head over heels in love with the digital world. So a friend of mine who I had worked with at Digital Research had actually gotten a job in the sales team at Microsoft. And he was trying to convince the big IT departments that there were actually guys writing for Windows. And my buddy in Microsoft is pitching the virtues of Windows. And I was going, yeah, Windows is wonderful. And this guy was saying, our issue here is that we've got people who are senior systems analysts building systems. And we've got bank tellers who have a high school diploma and they all have to use this system, this Windows system that you've got. Blink. There, was, there it was. I didn't want to write a shell for the expert and I didn't want to write a shell for the beginner. I wanted to write a shell construction set. And it, was, and it turned out to be really good. You know, I showed it to Adobe and Lotus and all these guys, and they all looked at it and said, this is really cool, why don't you show it to Microsoft? So I went to my buddy Glenn and I said, can you get me an audience with Bill Gates? And he called me back a couple weeks later and he said, well, okay, I, you're, you're not gonna see Gates, but you're gonna see one of his guys. I started, I went into my little spiel, you know, giving my little demo. Five minutes into it, he just pushed his chair back, he goes, Bill's gotta see this. And I'm ushered into a, a, uh, a big boardroom, a big table, and about a dozen Microsofties pour in. And I've got my little computer in front of me, and, and, uh, um, and I start demoing this thing to Bill. He was, he, he, it blew his mind. He'd never seen anything like it. At one point he goes, how did you do that? <laughs> I go, it's magic, Bill. But we eventually, signed the deal, it was going to be the front face of Windows 3.0. It got caught in a political battle within Microsoft and it became an orphan within Microsoft and it bounced around looking for a home within the organization and finally within Microsoft the Ruby, this visual programming front end, which I had always seen as a tool for users, uh, found this sort of strange bedfellow of QBasic, Microsoft's Basic, and then released it as Visual Basic. Microsoft developed all kinds of really cool things and ways to step through the language. It's really neat. But, but the basic idea that you're programming inside a visual environment, that was mine. And the basic idea that it's dynamically extensible and open to third parties, that was also my idea. And, um, and I think those were the two really significant contributions that made Visual Basic a success. I began to realize that what was really interesting to me was this idea of, of thinking about what software should be and how it should behave. And that was much more interesting to me than actually writing it. One day I was at a conference somewhere, I was leading a panel, and on the panel were several of my friends and colleagues from the development world. And at the end of the panel, the audience filed out, and I looked to my panelists, and I said, hey, you guys, you're the first to know. I'm a consultant. I'm not gonna do any coding, but I'm here to help you make your products easier to use and, and better. And uh, a couple of them hired me. So I began to help them without programming. The name Interaction Design barely existed, okay? There were no jobs anywhere in any company called user interface design, interaction design, design, nothing. From the time we really began, it was three years, and I wrote a big fat book called About Face 
of everything I knew. I put it all in there, every last thing. When I was done, I said, that's it. I, I don't know anything else. And three years later, I wrote another book because I was learning so much at the time. This is Silicon Valley's Oppenheimer moment. We've created these machines that extract uh, data from us and, and give us advertisements in return. And, um, and the, you know, the mechanisms of civil oppression used to be guns. Today, the mechanisms of civil oppression are Facebook and Google and Uber. And we're creating those tools, us technologists and designers. And so we have to all of a sudden go, well, wait a minute, is this really what we want to build? Do we really want to create this nuclear blast? Think this through.